Hello everyone, how's it going? Edit here again. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this really, really awesome Toys R Us limited edition Game Boy Light. I bought this on eBay for around about 50 pounds from a eBay seller called Console and Cost. And uh, yeah, it was listed with a load of problems, so we'll get into that. And uh, without any further ado, cue the intro. So I try and avoid console and cost at all costs because uh, usually it's a absolute joke. Their prices are like offensively high and I'm pretty certain that is actually an employee of console and cost taking my money. Uh, this thing was actually a very affordable price though. It was um, just over 50 pounds shipped. I won it in an auction. It wasn't like a buy it now price. Um, but usually they, they try and get about three or four hundred pounds out of a Game Boy Light. And um, yeah, even Game Boy, like regular DMG Game Boys, they try and sell upwards of a hundred pounds. So it gets incredibly expensive. This one was listed with a bunch of problems. Uh, essentially, it said that the screen had a defect. Uh, potentially, it was missing pieces. Uh, and that is true for uh, this screw right here. That one's, um, that one's missing. Hopefully, that's not because it's uh, rounded in there, but it could be. Um, it's also... And I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this very well, um, but you can see the speaker in there is not the original speaker. So I'm going to have to definitely replace that with an original one because being a clear Game Boy, it's quite important to me that the components inside here are actually correct. Um, so yeah, it did say though, in fact, it didn't mention anything about turning on. So I've got some batteries. I popped them in the back. Obviously, it hasn't also included the battery cover, uh, which is not a lot I can do about that. It's not like I can order a 3D printed one and spray paint it because it's a clear Game Boy uh, to begin with. So yeah, a little bit annoying. But let's go ahead and turn it on. Oh, okay. So it does actually turn on, which is good. And you can see that there is some uh, horizontal lines uh, going across the middle there. Let's see if we can just get it to recognize a game cartridge. There we go, okay. It is incredibly, incredibly quiet. But that being said, it does look like some of the buttons actually work. In fact, all of the buttons work. So that's excellent. It's very important on a Game Boy that the buttons work and uh, that just kind of rules out um, any idea of there being some corrosion on the board. If I, I try to just switch the backlight on there and the whole thing just um, reset, so obviously there's potentially some shorting going out there, the backlight definitely isn't working at all. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, the screen's got a load of gunk on it. It's also got a burn in the middle and those horizontal lines. And there's also, just to make matters even worse, some dead pixels going around the side. And I've got some Game Boy Pockets arriving in a couple of days, so we'll take one of the screens out of there and um, I'll show you how to use a Game Boy Pocket screen on a Game Boy Lite, which will probably be quite interesting. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and disassemble this Game Boy. Okay, so I've fully disassembled the Game Boy Light and I have Game Boy Light pieces everywhere, which is a absolute pleasure. And uh, 
Yeah, everything isn't actually looking in too bad condition, to be honest with you. Uh, the Game Boy Light um, casing has quite a lot of like sticker residue on it and the screen, but the screen doesn't seem to actually be um, damaged, which is quite good. So what I'm gonna do is chuck all of the um, plastic pieces and buttons into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner that I bought, and then I'm gonna give everything a clean by hand in the sink just to scrub the last little bits off. And uh, then I think the shell is actually gonna come out rather nicely. It's a big shame about the, uh, the missing battery cover, but I'll keep my eyes peeled for one. The board seems to be in incredibly good condition. There is no signs of corrosion anywhere. There's also not a lot of oxidation on the, um, the kind of contacts where the buttons go, which is ideal. That means that it probably hasn't been used a lot. And obviously it's just been chucked in a box or something and the battery cover is missing. The switch seems to be quite loose, which is a little bit concerning. But what I'm gonna do is drop some isopropyl alcohol uh, down the top and hopefully what we're gonna start to see is it make a connection again. And that might be the reason why the backlight isn't working. So I think the first thing we'll do is go ahead and desolder the speaker that's on here at the moment, which seems to have some sort of a dead carcass of an insect on there so we can flick that off because I don't want that going back in there ever again. And uh, let's take out some of the speakers that I've got. I've got a few of them. So it looks like this is the best condition one that's in my parts drawer. So I'll just go ahead and desolder uh, the two wires that are on there. Um, and it does actually look like the person has um, desoldered it from the speaker, the wires from the speaker, not from the board. So that'll be uh, quite easy for me to just uh, resolder them on again using the existing wires that are on there. Okay, so I've replaced that. That's now got an official um, Nintendo Game Boy Pocket speaker on there or Game Boy Light, I'm pretty certain they're universal and even Game Boy Color as well. So for the power switch, you've probably seen this before on my videos. You wanna get as much on the Q-tip as possible so that you've essentially got a little um, droplet and just squeeze that down into the switch and uh, you wanna get as much of the isopropyl in there as possible, almost drown the, uh, the switch in it. As I said, it will um, dry up quickly so you don't need to worry, but obviously don't turn it on whilst it's wet. Give it a flick backwards and forwards. So we'll let that dry off and I can focus on the rest of the board. With the contrast and volume wheel, you wanna do the same thing. Get as much isopropyl alcohol in there as you can and then just uh, twist it around and um, hopefully that will go deep down into the wheel I've actually just noticed here that it looks like that has actually disconnected and broken. So I'm gonna try and reflow the solder on that. Now, I don't think this is any sort of data that goes across there. So hopefully it's just power and reflowing the solder on this will be sufficient for it to actually get working again. Okay, we're pretty much where we want to be right now. Unfortunately, the screen still has damage on there. I haven't tackled that yet, but I've been able to um, pretty much, use, well, I've used every single part that uh, this Game Boy came with. I haven't used any additional parts, 
When you buy a Game Boy Light and you start looking at kind of 50, 60 pounds, um, spending even an extra five pounds on a replacement screen starts to put you off slightly. So the, uh, the lens on this is uh, pretty, pretty okay. There's a couple of scratches on it. Um, any more damage that you can see on there is actually from the screen underneath. So I've popped the, um, the back on and the contacts are back in as well. So if we go ahead and just push some batteries into this thing. Moment of truth, here we go. So the, the horizontal lines are still there. Contrast wheel now works great. And backlight, backlight works. So on top of the backlight now working, you can also hear that the speaker works absolutely great. Super, super loud. And the volume can be adjusted nice and smoothly, as can the, uh, the contrast. So cleaning those um, contacts has made a absolutely fantastic difference. So the only thing left to do then is uh, just replace the screen, which is unfortunately not something I can do in this video. Um, I'm gonna have to wait for the Game Boy Pocket. So I'm gonna make a second part to this video where I show you um, specifically in that video how to turn a Game Boy Pocket screen into a Game Boy Light screen. Yeah, super, super happy with how this has turned out. 50 pounds was an absolute bargain. Uh, everything that is was wrong with it is more or less fixed now besides the screen. We're just missing the battery cover. So for 50 pounds, I think I've gotten a pretty good deal out of this. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like and a comment or something like that. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.